here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries that border Russia as they could. Countries that border Russia. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any country that shares a land border with Russia. And as always, by countries, we mean a sovereign state that's a UN member in its own right. OK, right, Phil and Sue, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to answer first. We are looking for countries that border Russia. OK, we have an answer. Well, hoping... I can see it spelled in my head. So I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it roughly right. It's Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. All right. Yeah. We have Kyrgyzstan from Phil and Sue. Ross and Ben. Well, there's all these former Soviet states, but how many of them actually do border Russia? That's the mm. question. So we want to go for a better-known country which does have a border but people might not know it. So we're going for Iran. Iran. So we have Iran from Ross and Ben. We have Kyrgyzstan from Phil and Sue. Phil and Sue first, Kyrgyzstan. Let's see if that is correct. And if it is correct, let's see how many people said it. Oh. Bad oh. luck. And Ross and Ben have gone for Iran. Let's see if that's right and if it is, how many people said Iran? <laughs> um, wow. So, after the first question, it is nil, nil, draw. Richard. Uh, yeah, Iran sounds like a good answer, but, yeah, it doesn't border Russia. Uh, I think the, the country you were referring to was Kyrgyzstan, uh, but uh, it, it doesn't actually border Russia, so it wouldn't have been the correct answer anyway. Let's take a look at the countries that do border Russia. Probably fewer than you think. Uh, Azerbaijan and North Korea, down the bottom there were two. Well done if you got those. Uh, and then there's Belarus, uh, and that would have scored you 11 points. Kazakhstan and Georgia and Norway all got 13. Estonia on 17. Uh, Lithuania also 17. Latvia 18. Mongolia on 19. Then Ukraine and Finland on 32. Poland 49. It's a bit like the Eurovision Song Contest, isn't it? <laughs> Except, except China are in it. Uh, and China <laughs> won't right be on the long. Top there on, on 54. OK, so we've had one question and we have got nowhere. <laughs> Here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many ingredients in a salad niçoise as they could, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the main basic ingredients in a salad niçoise, not including the dressing. Uh, we've gone with James Martin's recipe for the BBC just as a... Of course you would. But a, a classic, the, the main ingredients in a classic salad niçoise. OK, Ross and Ben, you get to go first this time. OK, we have an answer. Yep, we're going to go for tuna. Tuna. OK, we have tuna from Ross and Ben. Phil and Sue, what are you going to say? Um, I would... I, I think black olives. And I think potato. Just... potato. And uh, maybe hard-boiled egg as well. Oh, yeah, hard-boiled egg. Definitely. Whoa. <laughs> he can take it, then. Hard-boiled egg. <laughs> hard okay, hard-boiled egg. We have tuna and we have hard-boiled egg. OK, tuna first. Ross and Ben, tuna. Is that right? And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Tuna. Right. Twenty-five. <laughs> and Phil and Sue have gone with hard-boiled egg. Let's see if that's right and how many people said it. It's right. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. So, after the second question, Ross and Ben are up 1-0. Richard. Uh, yeah, unlucky Phil and Sue. Let's take a look at the uh, ingredients here. Mixed salad leaves would have scored two. French beans, six. There's new potatoes, uh, 11. Anchovies, 12. Olives, 20. There's tuna on 25. Uh, eggs, 26, a hard-boiled egg. Tomatoes, 34. And lettuce right at the top on 53. OK, thanks, Richard. Here is your third question. Now, Ross and Ben, if you win this point, you are straight through to the final. Equally, though, Phil and Sue, if you want to go through to the final, you have to win this point. 
We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many George Orwell novels as they could. Richard? Uh, we're looking for any of the nine complete novels or non-fiction works by George Orwell. Uh, we're not looking for any essays or poems, just the nine novels and non-fiction works. Thanks very much. Phil and Sue, you go first this time. OK, Phil and Sue, we have an answer. Uh, we're going to go with The Road to Wigan Pier. The Road to Wigan Pier, OK. Ross and Ben? Um, I only know the obvious ones. Ross thinks he knows a um, risky I know one. of one, but I, I think it's not fiction. I think it's essays. Um, so Homage to Catalonia, I'm going to go for. Homage to Catalonia. OK, we have The Road to Wigan Pier. We have Homage to Catalonia. Road to Wigan Pier. Let's see Phil and Sue if it's right. And if it is, how many people said it? Right. Oh, look at that. That is fantastic. It might be just enough to keep you in the game. Ross and Ben have gone for homage to Catalonia, though. Let's see if that is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said homage to Catalonia. Right. That's a fantastic answer, Ross and Ben. After the third question, you are through to the final, 2-0. Richard? Yeah, it's a great answer. Well done, Ross, and well done for trusting in Ben. Uh, homage to Catalonia about his experiences in the Spanish Civil War. There were a couple of answers that would have beaten it. There's a couple of pointless answers here. Let's take a look. Uh, Burmese Days, which is his uh, second novel, Coming Up for Air, often described as his most depressing book, which is, uh, which is saying something. Um, <laughs> There's homage to Catalonia with clergyman's daughter and keep the aspidist reflying all on one point. And then some of the big... There's a road to Wigan Pier, three points. Down and out in Paris and London on four. And then two very big scorers. 1984, 47 points in Animal Farm with 51. Very well done uh, if you've got most of those at home. OK, thank you very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head -head is Phil and Sue. Wow, I mean, two incredibly close calls there. Mm. Um, you knew um, your stuff. Yeah, and there were countries bordering Russia that we, we could have said. Ukraine, yeah. thought Belarus. Ukraine was too obvious, but it would have yeah. won us the, yeah. the point. Would so, have won it. Yeah. I, I have every confidence next time you're on the show you'll do even better. But thanks very much for playing brilliant contestants. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant seat. But for Ross and Ben, though, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win £11,250. Well, congratulations, Ross and Ben. You've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. That's what we came for. Of course. <laughs> of course it is. You, now, however, if you want it, you have the chance to win our pointless jackpot. Yes, is that, please. Isn't yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. Well, at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £11,250. <laughs> One of our really big jackpots. The rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of. Now, we've had two pointless answers on the show, which you both gave. You just have to find one more now, and you will leave here and go home with all that money. First, you've got to choose a category from these three options. You can go for... Chemistry. International diplomacy. TV chat shows. Chemistry, international diplomacy, TV chat shows. What do you think? Chemistry, uh, definitely, definitely not. not. Definitely not. Definitely no. not. Um, of the two of those, I'm thinking TV chat shows. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll go for TV chat shows. Not yes. international diplomacy, isn't she? No. no OK. Let's find out what the question is.